Hello everybody and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Martin Cora's Movie Moments. Today we will be discussing the end of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. If you have been on this channel for about a second, you know I love Harry Potter. I think it's one of the greatest franchises of all time. And it really starts off strong with Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It has pretty much everything you want from the book. It you know, introduced all the amazing casting choices that they made in these movies. I personally think everybody in these movies is cast perfectly, including Dumbledore. The first Dumbledore was perfect. Dumbledore. You know, if he didn't die, I'm not sure if he could have done what Michael uh, Gammon did in the later movies, like with all the actual action and stuff, but... I'm sure they would have found a way, um, but I, I thought he was an excellent Dumbledore. So, right out the gate, we're starting strong with Harry Potter movies. Although, there are some problems with the first couple of movies, like the first two movies in particular, the, the ones that Chris Columbus directed. Number one, it's two hours and 23 minutes long, which is a long fucking movie. And it does have everything that was in the books, but at times, it can feel kind of sluggish and boring and a little snoozy because it really does seem to drag on. The movie's not paced very well, I'll be honest. Um, it's not like edgier seat. It really does feel like you just saw a year of school and that doesn't sound like the most appealing time. But it's Harry Potter, so I personally don't mind it, but anybody who isn't a big Harry Potter fan or is seeing the movie for the first time is probably not going to have the best time with it because as a movie in and of itself, it's not very good. As a Harry Potter movie, it's great. But that's, you know, fan goggles blinding me to the reality of the fact that the movie itself is fine. You know, I will say it's probably some of the best child acting out there, and that's probably one of the telltale marks of a Chris Columbus film. He really knows how to direct children, which is awesome. He's done a lot of great kids' movies where the kid acting is actually pretty decent, um, and this is a great example of it. They don't make you want to like scratch your eyes out um, like the Jurassic Park kids. Uh, they're actually really good, so bravo on that mark. There are two scenes in particular. I assume everybody knows the fucking plot of this movie. Uh, if you don't, read the book or watch the movie. It's it's so ubiquitous, like, I just assume everybody knows the plot of the movie. So, if you don't, I don't know where you've been. Anyway, there are two scenes I want to talk about in this particular film. Number one, the Christmas scene, is one of the best scenes in the whole franchise. It is so festive and awesome, I love it. Like, them opening the presents, them sitting at the table playing Wizard Chess, that block of scenes. Not all that bullshit with the Mirror of Eris said, because that's super slow and blah. But just the holiday scene with that that song, you know, you know the fucking that scene rocks, and it's because of that scene in my mind the um, Harry Potter for the first Harry Potter movie is like a Christmas movie because of that scene. I'm like I always think of that one scene when I think of the first movie, which is why it's ranked so high on like my personal list because this is probably the best of the Harry Potter films, except my personal favorite is probably five, I think. Um, Oh, no, it's six. Six is my favorite. I can't remember anymore. This one's super fucking good. Like, this is probably one of the better ones. Even with the pacing problems, it's still really good. Because it really does bring you into that world and show you all the different aspects of it and whatnot. So, that right there is awesome. The other scene I want to talk about is my biggest problem with the story in general. This isn't just a movie problem. This was in the book, and I didn't really like it then. The end of the movie with the house point ceremony is complete bullshit. It is such horseshit. Alright, I know the entire first book and the entire franchise is basically, basically built up Slytherin House to be a group of assholes and villains, right? But we all know that can't be the case 100% of the time. Sure, Malfoy's a little fucking cock. But that doesn't necessarily mean the rest of Slytherin House is also an evil son of a bitch. And to have all of these bastards grouped together under the these fuckers are evil banner, it doesn't seem really fair. So, even though Slytherin House had a, like, they won the House Cup. Think about it. Like, even with all the shit that, like, everybody else did, Slytherin somehow 
still was able to do enough stuff worthy of reward in order to win the House Cup. The only reason they didn't was because of pure favoritism on Dumbledore's part for the fucking Golden Trio. That's the only reason this entire house of students, who all studied their ass off to get that many fucking points, didn't win. Because they played chess, thought, and melted a teacher's face. Also, they did this. Yeah, you guys are going to lose more points for Gryffindor. <laughs> I shouldn't joke, I like Neville. But, come on! Like, I know they're the heroes, and of course Gryffindor had to win, because they're the heroes, but that is complete bullshit. If I was in Slytherin, and that shit happened, I would have been so mad. Could you imagine? Like, I studied super hard! We had all these points! And you're just giving them, like, 120 points for no fucking reason! It is complete horseshit. Complete horseshit. Like, I, I just... I don't know. If you wanted Gryffindor to win, you should have made Gryffindor win, you know? It makes for a cool moment that the final, you know, battle basically is rewarded in such a manner. But... Doesn't that seem like it's it's two stroke? One, it's bullshit for the rest of the students, and two, it's a pretty shitty reward for what they went through. You know, like in Chamber of Secrets, they got special awards for saving the school, but defeating Voldemort and preventing him from coming back to life is only worth 120 house points. There's not even like a cash reward or a paid vacation. This is some bullshit. I, don't, I wouldn't have bothered. Like, that's it? I defeated the darkest wizard of our time for a second time, and you motherfuckers are only giving me 120 house points? Eat a dick. I ain't doing that shit again. Fucking wasting my time with this hero nonsense. I'm just gonna be a dick and study. Who gives a shit? Oh no, all the mudbloods are dying in the second year. Man, fuck it, I got tests. Thank you all very much for watching. I have no idea what movie I'm gonna do next time, but I am sure that I will come up with something. Probably going to be Harry Potter, if I'm being honest with you. Have a good one, guys.